Welcome back to Nerd Crave, and the video I told you just a few weeks ago I probably wasn't going to do for a long, long time, and that is not another pickups video. Well, it is a pickups video, actually, but there's, there's some special reason why I have decided to kind of do this style of video again, and that is because my mind has been changed. Now, over a year ago, well over, like a year and a half ago, when the PS5 was announced and we were seeing footage of the PS5 and hearing about some of the games that were going to come out about it, uh, you know, at, up to the time when it first launched, I actually made a video saying, Sony, I'm just not impressed. PS5, I'm not feeling it. Uh, you know, I just don't see the reason why I need to upgrade to this next generation. Boy, boy was I wrong. You know, I impulse bought a PS5 a few days ago. Got it here to show you. Uh, and you know what? This thing, this thing is a work of art. And Sony, I am sorry. I reverse my past comments. Your console is fantastic. Now, I'm not here to get into the console wars and say one is better than the other. I absolutely love the Xbox ecosystem. Uh, I loved my Xbox One S, and I do plan on getting a Series X fairly shortly. There are some games that I really want to play. Not a huge Halo fan, but I definitely want to play Forza 5, which I haven't got around to yet, and I definitely want to play Microsoft Flight Simulator. And, uh, you know, there are a few other games on the series console that I definitely want to play. And going forward with all the big acquisitions that Microsoft is making, I am pretty excited for the future of Xbox. But I gotta tell you, the PS5 is awesome. I have had the chance to play this console every day for the last five or six days now. And I gotta tell you, I am really blown away by the next-gen experience that I am having. The PS4, to me, did not feel like enough of a generational leap. I was a huge fan of the PS3. I still am. I love the PS3. I have a, a good collection of PS3 games that I absolutely love, and I still have my PS3 hooked up and ready to go to this day. But the PS4 just felt like it was, you know, just that little bit better graphically, but otherwise... I don't know, it felt soulless to me. Um, and again, this is not a console wars thing, I just preferred the experience I had on my Xbox One over the PS4. I just did not connect with the PS4, but I am happy to say, after spending quite a bit of money on a mega bundle uh, for the PS5 that included all kinds of accessories like a charging dock and an extra controller which I got the red controller by the way and it's super nice looking and comfortable and we're going to talk about some of the accessories but something that has really blown my mind here are these Pulse 3D headphones. Now the experience, <laughs> let me get into the overall experience that I have had. I have felt finally like I have experienced a generational leap. Uh, <clears throat> started off playing Death Stranding Director's Cut with the new controller, with the haptic feedback, and the Pulse 3D headphones, and let me tell you, I, I, I was almost in tears at the beauty of the experience that I had. My arm hair was standing on end, I had goosebumps. It was just absolutely thrilling, absolutely thrilling, to experience a, a work of this caliber. Death Stranding is an amazing piece of art, and to experience that on my new 4K TV uh, with this wonderful console and all of these great accessories was gaming on another level for me. Now, I know this is old news for a lot of you who played Death Stranding on the PS4, or maybe you've had a PS5 for a year plus since it launched, but to me, this was the generational leap that I have been looking for since the PS3. So yeah, I picked up the PS5, I picked up the headphones, I picked up the extra controller, the charger dock, the media remote, which I don't really think I need the media remote, but it came in the bundle. Um, but uh, yeah, 
I've been having a fantastic, fantastic experience. Uh, and I want to share some of the games that I picked up because I missed the entire PS4 generation. I'm now excited to go back to some of those games that I missed and start collecting for the PS4. Uh, because you know what? There were some great, great games in the PS4 generation that I missed just because I switched over to Xbox. So, of course, I showed you I picked up Death Stranding. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. I'm just a couple of hours into it, but I haven't played a Kojima game in a long, long time, and this is really impressing me. <clears throat> Talk about generational leaps. Uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Uh, I actually just got this installed last night and played the first hour or so, and man, I was just blown away at how great this looks. The fact that you, you, you know, there's a cinematic and then you jump straight into gameplay. There's no division between the cinematic and the gameplay to the point where you're almost like, oh, oh, I, I gotta play now. Like, you think you're still watching a cinematic and all of a sudden there's gameplay required. Uh, absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, uh, the, the gameplay, like, everything moves so fast, everything is so crisp. I just couldn't believe my eyes what I was seeing on this TV through this console. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, a game that I have been salty as hell about not being able to play for the last year and a half or whatever it's been because I was an Xbox guy and I was super mad at Sony for working out whatever exclusive deals that they always work out with Square so that these games would not come out on other platforms. And you know what? Biting the bullet and going back to Sony, I've finally been able to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Picked up Intergrade here on the PS5. This is one of the few games that I was willing to pay full price for because I wanted to check this out the first day I picked up my PS5. Now, I haven't played a whole lot of it. When I set it up, I went into some kind of easy mode uh, where unfortunately the game plays itself, so I've got to go back and into the settings and change around, I guess go back to normal or something, because I actually want to do the fights and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I got a little ways into it, watched the opening cinematics, and was very, very impressed with how this looks. I just need to tweak some of the settings so that I can get the gameplay the way I want it, but really looking forward to getting into this. I mean, there's a hundred reviews out there, a thousand reviews out there about this game, so I don't need to talk too much about the game itself. If you have a PS5 or even a PS4, you've probably experienced this game already, and it's old hat to you. But to me, this is really exciting to be finally able to experience this game that I have been looking forward to for a long time now. Uh, and then... I sold some of my Switch games. Uh, most of what I've acquired here, uh, I've acquired through trades and things like that. So I sold quite a few Switch games and replaced the same games on the PS5 or in some cases the PS4 just to get access to the better versions for certain games that I really wanted to see in the best quality possible. So I traded in my Switch copy of Hades and picked up a PS5 copy of Hades. I do not have this installed yet, I just picked it up yesterday, but I'm pretty excited to see what this fantastic game is going to look like on the PS5. Now, I don't know, uh, you know how much difference it's going to be because it's an indie game, but I have a feeling this is going to look fantastic. Uh, a game that I probably never would have picked up, except I saw Gerard, the completionist, do a review of this game, and it looked pretty charming, and that is Bug Snacks. So I picked this up uh, on the day I picked up the console. I've got it installed, but I haven't checked it out yet. But from what I see from what Gerard has to say, I really think I'm going to enjoy this game, so looking forward to getting into this pretty soon. So, included in the bundle, which don't really care about, MLB The Show 21. Uh, I do like baseball games in general, but sports games, not really <clears throat> high on my list, so I, ha I don't even have this installed on the system. The problem with the system is definitely the storage capacity. Being that there's only 800 and change gigs available, uh, you know, from this console without upgrading, you really have to pick and choose what you want installed. Now, I know the PS4 games can be installed on an external hard drive, and I'm planning to do that pretty soon 
here, but uh, I did pick up several PS4 games that I'm waiting to install uh, until I get that external hard drive set up and ready to go. But I picked up on PS4 the Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection, which has the first three games on it, which I've only played the first one, and I loved it on PS3. Haven't got around to 2 and 3 yet, so I'm really looking forward to seeing these remastered versions and going into 2, which a lot of people say number 2 is the best one, so I'm really looking forward to getting into this pretty darn soon. Uh, and then something that is really near and dear to my heart is the Nino Kuni series, and I sold both Nino Kuni 1 and 2 on the Switch uh, to replace with the better version. So here I have Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. I have not picked up Nino Kuni 1 Remaster yet. Uh, I've got it in my Amazon wish list. I'll probably pick it up next week when I get paid. But this one was $17.99, and I was actually able to sell my Switch copy for like $40. So. Uh, I really don't feel too bad about that transaction and uh, you know I think this is going to be a wonderful experience on the PS5 even though it's a PS4 game I still think it's gonna look fantastic just because of that beautiful art style in those games something else that I'm really excited to play I bought this earlier this year when it launched on Xbox and then ended up trading it for something in a major trade so I've got it back now on PS4, and that is Mass Effect, the Legendary Edition. These are the remasters of the first three Mass Effect games, and everyone that I've talked to said that these are absolutely fantastic. This is a wonderful remaster, uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting into these because I have never played Mass Effect, even being the big PlayStation fan that I am, and, and you know, postmodern retro gamer, yada yada yada, loving PS3, loving 360, never played the Mass Effect games, and I really feel like it is time to change that, because these are really, really well thought of, considered to be some of the very best games of the PS3 and 360 generation, and it's more than time that I dive in and experience these games for myself. Getting towards the bottom of the pile here, uh, because I didn't have a PS4, I never experienced God of War, which everyone says is an absolute masterpiece. I was able to pick this up used at GameStop for about 10 or $15. I feel like that's a pretty good uh, value. I did pick up PS Now, and this game is available for me to download and play through PS Now, but I'm probably not going to keep PS Now at the moment. Now, looking forward to actually owning this physical God of War that I can play. Um, so yeah, uh, coming towards the end of the pile here, a couple games that I started on the Switch, loved on the Switch, but for one reason or another got distracted and never completed. And the first one is Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Again, this is another remaster from the 360 and PS3 era, uh, a game that some say is kind of like if World of Warcraft and Skyrim had a baby and I played two or three hours of this and it you know it looks fantastic it plays fantastic and I'm really excited to get back into this I had this on the switch I traded it again I paid like ten dollars for the ps4 copy and I got like twenty five dollars for my switch copy so I don't feel like that was a bad deal either and then same again sold my switch copy of Dragon Quest XI. Um, now, I did have the 11s version, which is considered to be the better version, but uh, Dragon Quest XI, uh, just the vanilla version for now, I was able to pick this game up for like $8, um, and again, sold my Switch copy for like $45, so I'm not really worried about the extra content for now. I will try to pick up the S version elsewhere, uh, you know, w when it comes on sale, but that's the end of the games that I picked up, guys. Uh, yeah. I'd really be interested in your perspective coming from someone who skipped the entire Sony generation of the PS4, and I'm only now just getting into the PS5. I'd love to know down in the comments what you think are some games that are absolutely essential for the PS4 and the PS5 that you think I should give some attention to, pick up, try out, 
and of course talk to you about on the channel. So let me know down in the comments what you think and we will see you in the next video. Stay classy.